were about a hundred thousand people there, and to judge by the community singing, they were all in first class form. Well, that's an impression of the preliminary scene, and now here come the real heroes of the day. Wolves and Leicester City. Leicester wearing white shorts. The Duke of Gloucester and the Duke of Edinburgh, walking with the Earl of Athlone, came out to inspect the two elevens. Billy Wright, 24-year-old England and Wolverhampton captain, made the presentation of the members of his team. After the players came the Wolves' former captain, now their manager, Stan Cullis. Then it was the turn of Norman Plummer, Leicester City skipper, with the men he'd led to Wembley. Plummer, Wright and Mr Mortimer, and Plummer wins the toss. So the Wolves kick off and the cup final, which so many had thought would be fought out by quite different teams, gets underway. After an early rush by Leicester, Wolves settled down to some really dangerous attacking movements, as indeed was to be expected from the record of their form. Gordon Bradley, Leicester's reserve goalie, was soon given a really gruelling test, but he rose to the great occasion magnificently. Johnny Hancocks, number seven, Wolves' right winger, was playing great football. His speed and control was terrific. It was in the 12th minute that a perfect centre from Hancocks gave Jesse Pye the very chance he was looking for. One up to the Wolves. They kept up the pressure and here's a study of Bradley on the hop. Agonising moments these for Leicester supporters. Wolves' second score followed a lob from right. Jimmy Dunn has a shot, the ball comes back to Pye, and it's a goal! Yes, things look pretty good to Wolves supporters at half-time, and Mr Bevin seemed to find this kind of excitement quite relaxing. Leicester kicked off after the interval and promptly began to show that they were by no means beaten yet. Within two minutes, their all-out attack was rewarded. Jack Lee had a shot which Williams parried, but Mal Griffiths netted. This was one of the thrills of the game, so here's another impression of how Leicester did it. Crook tried to save, but failed. Yes, the most surprising things do happen at cup finals, and Leicester clearly still had a chance. They continued their great effort to get on terms, and presently it looked as if they'd succeeded when Ken Chisholm beat Williams with a hard drive, but was given offside, and certainly looked it. For Leicester enthusiasts, of course, that was a big disappointment. On the field, too, things seemed to be hotting up a bit. But, of course, all that's nothing to the mental strain on every true fan. Finally, Sammy Smythe dribbled past one man after another and then put in a shot for Wolves that gave Bradley no chance. That was virtually the end. And when Billy Wright and his men went up to receive cup and medals from Princess Elizabeth, they had undoubtedly earned their triumph. But Wright himself was well aware of the gallant bid made by his opponents. Well, it was a marvellous game here and I'm Happiest man in the world today, but I would like to congratulate Leicester on a very, very sporting game.